the Mark I Audi TT. When this car was announced in 1995, people thought the concept car was way too futuristic to ever be produced. To say this car looked nothing like anything else on the road at the time would be an understatement. In people's minds, there was no way this concept car would ever make it into production. Not only did this car make it into production, but it looked nearly identical to the concept car. The Audi TT with an available automatic and a powerful turbocharged engine. It's hard to catch. This car would become a style icon and go on to inspire years of Audi design. People thought this car was so futuristic it was used as the future car in the original iRobot movie. But why is this car so important? And how does it exemplify one of the most influential schools in all of design history? To learn about this, we need to do a deep dive into the history of what makes the Audi TT such a special and important car. We need to go way back, specifically to World War I. The end of World War I left Germany completely in ruins. From these ashes rose a back to base school of the arts which would leave its impacts throughout the design history of the world, the Bauhaus. Literally meaning school of building, this was a German avant-garde arts and crafts academy, which was inaugurated six months after the end of World War I. The school encouraged artists and designers to use their talents to help rebuild the devastated and broken society. The Bauhaus grammar, famously simplifying things down into the basic shapes of a triangle, a square, and a circle, evoked a back-to-basics mentality. This makes sense since they were literally reimagining a society which was destroyed by War. When you're starting completely from scratch, this necessitates the need to reimagine design simplicity. This school challenged everything that was traditional with design. Even the school was taught an avant-garde method. Years later, World War II would throw yet another wrench into this plan. The Bauhaus was all about rejecting traditional design, which the Nazis saw as a threat to their Germanic pride. This school was literally chased across the European countryside, to Germany, from Weimar to Dassault, and finally into Berlin. It's here where the school was forced to eventually close. Little did the Nazis know that by chasing this school across the European countryside, they were actually spreading its influence onto a global scale. This school was practically designed to be mobile. One of the primary slogans for the Bauhaus is art to industry, which is the idea of designing products for mass production. Their design workshops produced kitchenware, textiles, steel frame chairs, and nearly everything you could think of. Since this design philosophy was so portable, Bauhaus outposts popped up wherever this design philosophy was introduced. These include places like the United States, to Israel, and even Chile. The founder, Walter Gro ended up at Harvard, where he was given the opportunity to put on a Museum of Modern Art exhibit. This dramatically elevated the design philosophy status. While he was there, he personally trained an artist who went on to set up the Chicago School of Design and happened to be a contemporary of another popularizer of modern design, Hugh Hefner. The modernist design philosophy, which was popularized by these icons, takes a dramatic influence from the Bauhaus. The Bauhaus design also fit very well with the post-World War II era. Swords were beaten into cars, refrigerators, TVs, houses, and other chrome and steel delight. The war revolutionized assembly line manufacturing. One of the key features of Bauhaus design is designed for mass market appeal and easy production through manufacturing. So when the war ended and there was a surplus of assembly lines, the Bauhaus was primed to go mainstream. Bauhaus Bauhaus style successfully turned a new industrial revolution into an artistic impulse for the middle class that was attainable only because of its manufacturing methods. It was going to be big, and on top of that, it's only natural that it found its way into the automotive industry. Specifically, the Bauhaus resurgence in the automotive industry took place in the 1995 Frankfurt Motor Show with the Audi TT. At this 1995 show, it was deemed too futuristic to ever be produced. The TT had an incredibly industrial Bauhaus design. More reminiscent to bent sheet metal or an extrusion profile than the organically designed vehicles being designed at the same time. This was a dramatic change from the norm. It was a complete departure from the oh-so-typical wedge design found in traditional sports cars of the time. Rather than that typical shape, this car focuses on industrial symmetry and simplicity. Following Bauhaus ideas, it breaks design into its base components and simplest form. Seen from the side, the TT is designed so that the front of the car exactly mimics the rear of the car. This is shown down to the body lines and even the head headlight and taillight placement and location. The headlights and taillights are an important callback to Bauhaus design. The Marcel Brewer's Bauhaus 
1926 chair was an ode to simplicity and the beauty of manufacturing. The B3 took inspiration from huge club seats that you could find in country estates, which were very material intensive. The B3, however, was made of tubular steel, which was a very new technology for the time. It was able to produce the same level of comfort and support with a much higher level of artistic appeal in a much simpler process. I bring this up because the lights on the TT are actually a very similar story. You'll notice this car is a turning point for the way that automotive lights were designed. Thanks to Audi's investments in how light lenses were formed, this meant that far more complex shapes could be achieved. It's because of this new technology that the headlights and brake lights curve with the body's shape, yet also match perfectly with the panel gaps of the bumpers. This technology is used all over in the automotive market today but dates back to this vehicle. This car is an ode to a simpler time. Rather than the car designs getting progressively more complicated, this took inspiration from the original Bauhaus itself and brought a real sense of simplicity to the world of car design. There is a lack of defined bumpers on the car, and one word that defines the TT is consistency. There are numerous aspects that make this car entirely symmetrical and stylized to the point of the absurd. In this car, form follows function, and they're united equally. Everything has a purpose, and everything is designed to appeal aesthetically as well as mechanically. Take the pattern on the gas flap, for instance. This circle with dots in it is found all over the interior. It's on the shifter, all of the vents, the seat heaters, the doorknobs, and numerous other places. This icon seems to be a symbol of interaction for the car. Each symbol is made with brushed aluminum and located on something you will interact with regularly. This consistency makes the car intuitive to you, since you're either pulling or twisting everything that this is on. This interior is timelessly simplistic. Just looking at it, you wouldn't be able to tell that it is a 20-year-old vehicle. Nearly everything in the interior is custom to the Audi TT, and very little was reused from any other Audi model at the time. If this kind of production was put into the modern TTs, there would be no money to be made. That's another reason why the Mark 1 TT is so special. While the later TTs draw inspiration from the Mark 1 TT, they never capture the original Bauhaus magic. With changes in safety requirements and customer tastes, the design of those cars had to change. They got bigger, more aggressive, and lost their interior simplistic themes. That's just the way the evolution of time and design works though. I think I just had a wake up call. And it was disguised as a car. And it was screaming at me not to get too comfortable. And fall asleep. And miss my life. It's quite possible we will never see a car quite like the Mark 1 Audi TT ever again. The unique design of the Audi TT went on to inspire later generations, among other cars and models. Gone was Audi's original boxy design. In was the rounded and curvy appeal of the TT. This influence can be seen in nearly every model since, especially in the supercar, the Audi R8. While this car gets a lot of flack for being different, it is incredibly influential. The Mark 1 TT represents a very special time in automotive history. This car is a perfect representation of Bauhaus design philosophy and everything that that school stood for. The Mark 1 TT will forever be known as a style icon.